I thought I'd bring out Peanut the dog. It's been a while since she's been on camera. She's had some health problems this past year. She was diagnosed with uh, pancreatitis and was put on a strict diet. Well, that was a few months ago. And she's doing better. Right, Peanut? Peanut is such a sweet dog. But she's getting older. We don't know exactly how old she is. But she's over 10 and possibly 12 or 13. I want to give her some turkey here. Slow and fat. She likes it. In the video coming up, I mentioned that it's the final episode of the series. But nope, I just couldn't finish this radio due to problems you will see. So sit back and relax, grab a snack and beverage, and watch. Me and Peanut are going to watch. Right, Peanut? Enjoy the show. Well, welcome one and all to part three and final episode of this 1937 Philco Radio. Yay! Now we're going to jump right in and start on the cabinet here. This is how this one looks, but let me show you a picture of one in better condition and you'll get an idea of how it looked originally. Holy cow! So, first thing we're going to do is take out the, uh, the dial here and the uh, grill cloth. So let's turn it around and see what needs to be done on it. Looks like there's some staples here. Let's take out those staples. Come on up here, I want to scare the cabinet. Take your time. There's no rush. Oh! Oh dear. Oh, brother. In order to put veneer on here, I need to remove this section here of this trim because it's just going to be in the way. So let's see if I can do that. I have faith in you. I may be able to pry it loose here. It looks like there's a gap here. Let me use a putty knife. Oh, look at that. It's already loose. Ha! Some very small nails right here. Very small. There was four of those holding that little trim in there. You can see the screwdriver size, so it's pretty small. All right, this is fascinating, it is. How very interesting. Unbelievable! Amazing! Fantastic! Cool! Okay, let me show you what I plan to do with this. Now I want to take some tracing paper and trace all these lines here. Huh? So I'll have an exact replica of what it looks like. Because this is going to be sanded down and stripped. Let me secure that tracing paper down and we'll make a copy of the front here. Now the camera's not picking that up very well, but I can see it clear enough to trace it. Oh, brother. What's all this? You should have told us what you were going to do. You reap what you sow. The plan I've got is uh, to make these, uh, these stripes here. You see these? You got the three different stripes here. Three different stripes here. It goes from all the way up here, down to here, plus down here to down here. 
I'm going to create a decal for that. <laughs> Whether I can do that successfully, I don't know. As far as the black strip that goes all the way up here, I'm going to uh, paint that. Same as on this side here. <laughs> I'm also going to use uh, two types of uh, veneer on here. This side here, which you see the fake burlwood uh, finish on both sides here. I've got that burlwood uh, veneer I'm going to use. For the middle part, I've got a lighter colored veneer I'm going to use. So there'll be three different pieces. Now whether I could do this successfully, I don't have a clue. The only thing I can do is try it. If it doesn't work, we'll go to plan B. This is just another trial and error type of thing that you see me do in the past. And believe me, I'll come up with something if this doesn't work. So before I sand all this off here, I'm going to create the decal. I created uh, six of these stripes here. I'm going to print these on uh, a laser printer using this paper, laser water slide decal paper. So let's just print this. And we'll see what we get. Hopefully it'll work good. I think that might work, but the only way to tell is just put the veneer on there and try it. Okay, I've got my tracing here. I also made a photocopy of this just to cover my ass in case I needed it. Oh, brother. You know, I was thinking, maybe I'll just use this photocopy here, cut out these holes and then glue that on there. What do you think? Think that would work? How dare you? How dare you, sir? How dare you suggest such a thing? April Fool. I'm gonna cut out this piece here, this section. I'm gonna start on this line and we'll see what happens. You gotta be kidding me. Kind of flimsy. Do you have a permit for that? Okay. So let's sand all this off and put the veneer on there. That sounds like fun, huh? We're gonna have a lot of fun here!
Well, there's the first step in re-veneering this uh, cabinet here. Uh, I'd like to stroke it. It looks like it went down flat. I was worried about it because it was all wrinkly, but it uh, looks like it did its job. The next step is uh, I'm going to use this veneer for the middle part. <laughs> then once that's done, I'm going to use the same veneer on this side here. Go screw yourself. So far so good. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Maybe I can do this after all. You can say that again. I have been busy cutting veneer. Let me show you what I've got here. Here's the centerpiece. <laughs> I didn't have a piece this size long enough. So I'm going to have to uh, use two pieces on it. <laughs> and the Burlwood veneer. What do you think, huh? <laughs> Who the hell's laughing out there? You think it's funny? Who's ever laughing out there? I'm gonna send Dickel over. He's gonna punch you in the nose. Right, Dickel? Right, Buzz. How dare they laugh at you? You're damn right. I think it looks okay. <laughs> now, I'm gonna uh, glue this centerpiece in. Well, I have completed all the veneering. I added this one strip here, off camera. I had a little problem up here, but uh, that'll be fixed later. It's got some gaps in here, but that's okay. I'm gonna just fill this with a uh, wood filler because the, uh, the black line on here, this black line that goes all the way up on each side. It's going to be uh, maybe 3 16 of an inch here. That'll be all black. When I cut this hole out here, this was kind of hard because it's got, uh, first of all, it's got the hole inside here, and then there's a lip here. See this lip? Yes. That's like an eighth of an inch. And I had to be very careful not to uh, go wild or I would get a raggedy edge up here on the veneer, but it worked out good. There was a lot of glue in here that I had to remove and carefully sand this. So now it's nice and smooth 
and it's a round hole now. I just need to uh, cut out these these holes in here. It's got to be perfect. Be careful. You always got to do everything the hard way. Well, that was the first cutout. I have two more to do in the middle and one more on each side. So I better get my ass to work. Okay, let's take a look at it. Oh boy, oh boy. I love it. It turned out better than I had hoped. Remember how rough that was? Right now it's smooth. I took some wood filler filled in these gaps here that won't be seen in the final product neither will this I want to stain this but I don't want to stain this too dark or this so what I think I'll do is I'll just stain it a very light overall stain then we'll see what it looks like I'm going to run a test here. I got some lighter stain here. This is golden oak. And I got a piece of uh, this veneer. This is maple veneer, which is this part here. And of course, this is the burl wood. Now I sanded it here because when you sand it, it turns it a little bit lighter color to match that. So we'll just see what this looks like on both of these. Now I got some Buzz Undies, and they're clean. Oh, oh, good Lord! Oh, well, sort of. Ew! Might be a little skid mark there, but uh, never mind. Yeah. First we'll try it on here. That's pretty good. That's the start. Now let's see what it looks like on here. I think that might work for the first pass. Let's go ahead and do the real thing. Okay, here goes nothing. You can say that again. Try to move that before I spill it. I think that's a winner. We'll let that soak in. Oh, it's just gorgeous. And take it from there. Before I continue doing the rest of this, 
I've got to work on this. This part here. I've got to sand that down or strip it or something. Let's just see if that comes off easy. Well, that just flakes off like dandruff. So I'm going to sand this whole thing, get that out of the way. I'm just going to go ahead and stain the uh, sides here with some red oak. That looks nice. Okay, let's continue on the front here. It started looking pretty straightforward, so I applied some stain on the bottom section. Then I wanted to darken it up a bit and apply some toner. So far, so good. This is where my trouble started. I had filled in those gaps in the veneer with walnut wood filler. It obviously was a mismatch, but I thought I could just blend it in with a bit of toner, but I was wrong. So I cut out that section and added a sliver of veneer. Adding some stain to see how it would look only proved that I needed to get a maple wood filler to blend it in. So off to Ace Hardware I went. And the color matched so I thought I was in like Flynn. After sanding, it looked pretty damn good. So out came the toner to try it again. Now the camera's not showing it very well, but that little area still stuck out and it really started to bug me. So I went darker hoping to blend it in better. Well, I ended up making that middle strip very dark to hide my little problem. Funny thing is, it's still visible. Oh well, I'll just have to live with it. And then I decided I didn't want to get that burlwood veneer any darker with stain or toner. So I applied some Danish oil just to bring out the grain. Wow! And that was a winner. Ah, it's so good, eh? Then it was time to paint the two black stripes on the front. The plan was to use black spray paint on the straight sections first. Then I used a paint sharpie to do the curved sections. After that, it was decal time. To my shock and horror, the clear decal paper I was using wouldn't work. Thinking maybe after drying, the decals would look better, I used a heat gun to dry it. 
but it wasn't to be. I needed to get the decal paper with the white background so the colors would stand out. So let's see how that turned out. Well, it's five days later, because I had to reorder that paper. You may have noticed I changed the color of this section here. I made it a little lighter. I think it looks better that way. What do you think? Anyway, here's the stripe on the new paper. Let's see if we can get this to work. Now the hard part. I don't know if I can do this. Think positive. This is one long decal. So I'll probably screw it up, but you gotta start somewhere. Oh boy. Easy does it, fella. Come on, Buzz. You did it! You did it! I don't believe it. I knew you would! I just knew you would! Ah. What a bonehead. Very touchy. Well, there it is. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I put a couple of coats of lacquer on it. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, it's far from finished. There's a lot of trim that needs to be uh, painted. Like the insides here got to be painted dark brown. I have yet to uh, put some uh, lacquer on here. These trims are going to be black. But I'm going to set this aside for the time being and uh, start working on the chassis. So let's take this away. And get back to this. Remember, I gotta completely rewire this. Also, I gotta do the transformer. Uh, do these Bakelite blocks here. And that's a good two or three days of work right there. So let's get out the wire and start wiring. I want to complete this series before Christmas. I'm going to start on the transformer first. I'm going to wire this up with that pretty wire. I'm going to use all the colors that the schematic says. Like the high voltage wires are yellow. The incoming wires are white. There's blue wires. 
etc., etc., etc. So I'm just going to uh, cut it here and just uh, splice on a wire. We now join the following program already in progress. This pushback wire is great. If you ever used it, you never want to go back to the old stuff. The stranded wire is already tinned. You just pull it back and you're ready to go. Oh man, this is driving me crazy. Oh, brother! What a bonehead! You big dope! I entrusted you with a mission of great importance, and you failed!
Well, it's been a few days since you've seen that last shot of everything wired up. Transformer was in there, caps were in there, and I was all ready to test it. And I did test it, off camera. And boy, Buzz was in trouble. Trouble with a capital T, that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. On first power up, this resistor here, it's the uh, 200 ohm R23, started smoking. Oh, dear me. And I said, oh, no, not again. And that was the resistor that looked like a uh, capacitor, remember? It was bulging and had blown out. So I replaced it with this one, and we tested it, and it worked fine. So I thought, well, maybe if I put a uh, higher wattage resistor in there, that might fix the problem, just to see what was going on with it. So I put that uh, 200 ohm 10 watt in there, and that sucker was getting hot. So I figured, oh brother, I made a wiring mistake. Impossible! So I was checking out the wiring and tracing out all the wires, and I couldn't find any mistakes. <laughs> yeah, right. With power checks, I was getting some weird readings on the 6.3 windings. We got a problem with this transformer. Now what? Whether it was something I did when I rewired it or what. Buzz, you're such a bonehead. Let's take a closer look at that and we'll test it. Oh boy, that's all I need. I should have known my luck was changing because I broke my rectifier tube. <laughs> So I had to order another one for 23 bucks plus shipping. That's a 5Y4. So maybe that jinxed me, huh? It's a jinx, that's what it is. Could be. Oh no! Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is check these uh, 6.3 volt windings. I've got this on ohms. There should be a low reading. 2.3 ohms. Now the schematic says it's supposed to be 0.1 ohms. I don't know if that's a discrepancy in my meter or what, but uh, you know, I was watching an old 64 goat video about that radio he bought for a dollar, I think, and he took out the transformer and uh, did a test on it. And he was testing the windings to the shell. There should be no uh, continuity because the shell is supposed to be a ground, which it bolts onto the chassis. So let's just take one of these off and hook it up to the screw here that holds the uh, clamshells in. We should get no uh, continuity. Oh, 
Holy moly. There's definitely something in there that's causing that. Finding a mess like this ought to make anyone frightened. Let's put this back. Test the other one. Look at that. 77 ohms. I've got the other leads here. These yellow ones here are the high voltage. The green is the center tap. These two blues are the 5 volts for the rectifier. Let's go to the high voltage windings. So we cross those windings, we've seen uh, 487 ohms. Center tap should be half of that. 252. So with one of these leads on the high voltage, this is uh, grounded. Oh. Even the high voltage windings are uh, shorted. Let's go to the other lead of the high voltage. Twelve meg. Then goes right to a short here. Hey, what's going on around here? Let's test the center tap. That's shorted. The whole damn thing is shorted. <laughs> what did I do? What happened to my transformer? Maybe it was like this all along, and I was just lucky it worked in the beginning. I don't know. So I'm going to take this apart and we'll take a look at it. Now let's see. I don't see anything obvious. Anybody for spaghetti? Mm. I've got this wired in. I ohmed it out and uh, I was wiggling the wires and touching uh, the core and I could not duplicate that, uh, that air I was getting earlier. So it must have had something to do with these wires being pinched in in the clamshell. So I'm going to just power this radio up as is here and uh, maybe we'll wiggle the wires a little bit see if anything changes but we need to test this before I can go any further so that being said let's power it up so let's go up to 30 volts Nothing so far. 50 volts. Picking up B plus. So far so good. About 60 volts. That resistor's cool. Cool. So far we got 3.8 volts going up to 6.3. Well, that looks good. 90 volts. It's 
Let's go up to about 110. Okay, we're getting our 6.2 volts there for the filament voltage. Here's the speaker. Although the B plus is pretty low, we should be getting a couple hundred volts at least. Be careful, Buzz. This is pretty steady here. That's about 117 right there. Poor Sleepy Joe. You don't know what's going on. Okay, it's working. The Y on Marty getting 159 there. That's another question. It's a buzzy noise. Transforms buzzing. What's that about? I don't know. We're going to have to take this thing apart and get to the bottom of this. But it ain't going to happen today. Well, that's going to conclude this episode. I really wanted to finish this radio today, but it's not going to happen. We're going to take that transformer apart, peel back that paper, and redo all the connections. So I won't have these heat shrink connections here. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know what it's going to look like inside there. So the transformer may or may not be bad. It's looking like it does have a problem. B plus is low. So who knows? I need to get to the bottom of this. But my time is up. So. We will conclude this series in part four. I promise you that. So I hope you tune in. This is Old Buzz 1151. And Old Buzz the Transformer. See you next time. Good night, everybody. Hello, folks. Welcome to another edition of Buzz Cinema. I am your humble host, Dickel Afflockett. Today's film is titled The Desert Rat and it was made around 1970. Written and directed by Buzz, it features Buzz's older brother Bose in a great performance playing a Mexican bandito. This was filmed on location in Joshua Tree National Monument in California. Buzz co-stars playing three different roles. The car used in this comedy was a 1959 Oldsmobile 98 and was Buzz's first car. 
So let's take you back 52 years ago and watch this classic young Buzz 1151 production. Roll the film! Pingo, te porto mi automobile. Apúrame, yo pronto sal Ringo. ¿Ah? Voy en tu culo, lo siento. Pingo, pronto. Empieza a correr o te mato. Correr, correr, Pingo. Run, run. Americano, mucho gusto. Adiós. de basura. Tú pibna nacita. Solo a mí. Hey, amigo. Vengo. What do you want, Mexican? Tengo. Pick the motor. Ah, go to hell! My caramba. Shake him up! Give me your wallet. Please, senor! Don't kill me! I have no money! I have no money! Ah, shut up. <laughs> Come on in here, I know you got a wallet in there. Ah, here it is. Your Mexican wallet. Money. Here, you can have your wallet back. Look 
care of, amigo. You got the wrong idea.